All right, in this section, we're going to see another really useful integration technique. And this technique is going to be predominantly used to integrate rational functions. So remember, a rational function is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Uh, so let's look at a quick example. OK, so let's say we want to integrate this thing. And there's no obvious u substitution. And there's no obvious trigonometric substitution. And there's nothing that jumps out at us with respect to integration by parts. Uh, that's not to say that maybe some really clever substitutions um, might not solve this problem. Or you could certainly try completing the square in the denominator and probably get a tangent substitution to work. But that still wouldn't apply if the denominator were, say, a cube. Now we can't complete the square anymore, and we're and we still don't have an obvious way of approaching this problem. So what we need in general is a technique for handling rational expressions like this. And the way we manage it is actually by spending most of our time just doing some algebra. So let's make the following observation. If in an algebra class you were handed this particular expression and told to combine and simplify, well, you would know that you need a common denominator. And our common denominator would be the factors x minus 1 and x plus 2. And the numerator would be, of course, 2 times x plus 2 minus 1 times x minus 1. And our numerator becomes 2x plus 4 minus x plus 1. And our denominator we could FOIL which would give us x squared plus x minus 2. And the numerator becomes 2x minus x, which is x, plus 5 over x squared plus x minus 2. OK, so you might recognize this answer here as the integrand that originally initiated this conversation. OK, so algebraically, what this means is if we're trying to integrate x plus 5, over x squared plus x minus 2. Well, we know we can replace this expression with something equivalent to it algebraically, which would be this. Ah, OK. But then we can integrate those two pieces quite easily, because this first term integrates to 2 ln absolute value of x minus 1. And the second one integrates to ln of absolute value of x plus 2. And we're done. So where did this come from? Here we were just handed that, and we know a basic algebraic process that will take us from these partial fractions to the combined form. So partial fraction decomposition refers to the opposite process of combining and simplifying. So in other words, it takes a rational expression like this guy and decomposes it into a sum of simpler rational expressions. Now I'm going to just refer to this as PFD from now on, so we don't have to write it all out. So partial fraction decomposition refers to converting a rational expression to a sum of simpler rational expressions. The idea is you start with a complicated rational expression, through the process of partial fraction decomposition, it becomes a sum, or in this case a difference, of two simpler rational expressions. And each of those guys integrates. OK, well, what exactly is the process of partial fraction decomposition? Well, it's not too bad a process. However, it's best demonstrated through example. So we're going to go into a full example and see how we would think about and use partial fraction decomposition. All right, so here we have a, an integral of a rational expression. And there's no obvious u substitution. So let's try partial fraction decomposition. 
All right, so the first thing we're going to do when you use partial fraction decomposition is you factor the denominator. You only need to factor the denominator, not the numerator. In fact, factoring the numerator would be unhelpful in general. We have our numerator, x minus 2, and the denominator factors to 2x plus 1 times x minus 1. All right, and I want to point out that the entire process of partial fraction decomposition takes place as side work. So we're not dealing with the fact that this is a calculus problem or an integral or anything. We're just doing algebra here. The next thing we do is we set the integrand equal to its partial fraction decomposition form. So that form is going to depend on what we're working with. But what we have here is a pretty straightforward case because we have two irreducible linear factors in the denominator, which means this is simply going to decompose into some unknown constant, which we'll call capital A, divided by one of the factors, plus some other unknown constant, we'll call capital B, divided by the other factor. Now what we're going to do is multiply both sides by this factored denominator. So on the left, we're going to get x minus 2. And on the right, we're going to get capital A times x minus 1 plus capital B times 2x plus 1. Our job is to figure out what capital A and capital B are. They are both constants. And we're going to do this by comparing the coefficients of the powers of x on the right side with the coefficients of the powers of x on the left side. So in order to do that, we need to expand and combine like terms by power of x. So if we distribute the a here, we get ax minus a, and distributing the b, we'll get 2bx plus b. And now we combine by power of x, so we go x to the first powers. We have a plus 2b as their coefficient. And then all the constants, which are like x to the 0 power, we have minus a plus b. OK, the next thing we want to do is we're going to match coefficients and solve the system of equations for a and b. So matching coefficients means that the coefficient of x on the left, which is 1, must match the coefficient of x on the right, which is a plus 2b. So we get 1 is equal to a plus 2b. And the constant term on the left, which is negative 2, must match the constant term on the right, which is negative a plus b. So here we have a system of equations that we want to solve for. Now you can solve this system however you want. Um, I think it looks nice and clean if we just add these together, because then we're going to get 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. The a's will cancel, and we'll get 3b. So this tells us that b is equal to negative 1 third. Since b is equal to negative 1 third, that means that returning to one of these equations, like negative 2 is equal to negative a plus b. So we can see, therefore, that a is equal to negative 1 third plus 2. So a is equal to 5 thirds. All right, so what's our conclusion? Our conclusion is that algebraically, x minus 2 over 2x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to, well, it was a divided by 2x plus 1. So that's 5 thirds over 2x plus 1 plus b, which is negative 1 third, over x minus 1. OK, so that was partial fraction decomposition. It's exactly the opposite process of combining two rational expressions from algebra class. Uh, you may be tempted to write something like this as 5 divided by 3 times 2x plus 1, 
minus one divided by three times x minus one. But since we're about to do some calculus, it's actually easier if we have the fractions completely in the numerator. The original integral was of course this. So now we can split this into several integrals and work out each one independently. Okay, well we know that this integral here will become 5 thirds times 1 half ln of absolute value of 2x plus 1. Remember that 1 half emerged because of the quick power move u substitution. And this one here will become negative 1 third ln of absolute value of x minus 1 plus our constant. Tiny bit of cleanup here, 5 over 6, ln absolute 2x plus 1, minus 1 third, ln absolute x minus 1. And there's our final answer. So there is a shortcut for obtaining the coefficients a and b. If we roll ourselves all the way back to this step, we can plug in specifically chosen values of x that will eliminate either a or b, allowing us to solve for the other variable. And this is called the cover-up method because it's like you're covering up specific terms. So for example, if we let x equal 1, we know that that would eliminate this particular term because x minus 1 is 0. So plugging in x equal 1 everywhere else, we would get on the left 1 minus 2, which is negative 1, and on the right, we would get b times 2 times 1 plus 1. So that tells us that b is equal to negative 1 third. If we wanted to cover up this term, we could let x equal negative 1 half, as that would end up with b times 0. So now we would get negative 1 half minus 2, which is negative 5 halves, is equal to a times negative one-half minus one, which is negative three-halves. And this tells us that a is equal to five over three. So the cover-up method is definitely more efficient. However, as we're gonna see, it doesn't always apply and it doesn't always get you every coefficient. So sometimes you have no choice but to match the terms and solve the system of equations. Okay, let's talk about how to find the partial fraction decomposition form. Because it's not quite as straightforward as the last couple of examples where every factor of the denominator produced a simple fraction. So what are the steps and what do we need to be thinking about? So of course, the first move is just to completely factor the denominator. Now, once you've done this, each irreducible factor will contribute one or more terms to the form. So what it contributes will depend on two things, the degree of the factor and the multiplicity of the factor. So if an irreducible factor is linear, so for example, a factor like ax plus b, then this is the simplest case, and it contributes just a capital letter, whatever the next available capital letter is, divided by that factor to the form. So in the last example, both factors were irreducibly linear, so we had a over 1 plus b over the other, and that was that. Um, however, you could have an irreducible quadratic factor. So, for example, ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, well, then it contributes something over itself, ax squared plus bx plus c. However, the numerator is not a single letter. The numerator is actually a linear form involving two capital letters. So whatever the next two capitals that are available are, like ax plus b. 
Now we have not encountered that in an example yet, but we will. And finally, the one more uh, complication is if we have high multiplicity. Say multiplicity m. Uh, so for example, here's a linear factor with multiplicity m, meaning that if that factor occurs several times, so you have like x plus 3 all raised to the 4, uh, well then it contributes m distinct terms and it, does, it contributes them in the following way. So you get a over ax plus b, and then the next letter, b, over the square of that factor, and then c over the cube of that factor, and you keep going until you get to, I guess, m, the mth power of the factor. Okay, so our next example, we're just gonna write out the partial fraction decomposition form, and it's gonna have basically every possible complication. So if you understand the next example, then you'll be able to find the form for anything. Okay, so again, we're not gonna integrate. This is not an integral problem, thank goodness. We just wanna write out the form, and we're not even going to go and find the coefficients because it would be too tedious a problem. So our first step to finding the form is to make sure everything's factored and everything needs to be factored down to either linear factors or irreducible quadratics. So we have linear, linear, and the x squared is actually a linear factor squared. So think of the x as x minus 0. So that is a linear factor with multiplicity 2. x squared plus 2 is an irreducible quadratic factor. That one has multiplicity 2. And x cubed minus 1, that is not fully factored. It factors a little bit further using the SOAP formula, and there we are. So it factored into an irreducible linear and an irreducible quadratic. Okay, so the form is going to be, well, let's look at the first factor we encounter. This is a linear factor with multiplicity one, so that's the simplest case. It'll just be A over that factor. All right, moving right along. The next factor we encounter is a linear factor with multiplicity 3. So that means that we're going to need three terms added to our partial fraction decomposition. And since it's linear, it'll just be a single letter over x plus 5, a single letter over x plus 5 squared, and a single letter over x plus 5 cubed. And now that one's handled. The x squared is, again, it's an irreducible linear factor of multiplicity 2. So that means it'll be, as a linear factor, it gets a single letter in the numerator. So e over x plus f over x squared. All right, now we encounter an irreducible quadratic for the first time. So we know that that means we're going to need two letters in the numerator. So what's next? G and H. So that would be GX plus H, all divided by X squared plus 2. But it has multiplicity 2, so we need another guy like that. IX plus J over X squared plus 2, and that's all squared. All right. Next, we encounter the X minus 1 factor, which is a linear factor. Uh, multiplicity 1, so that's just going to be k over x minus 1. And finally, we have an irreducible quadratic factor with multiplicity 1, so it's going to be just one more term, but we need two letters. So lx plus m over x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so you do need to know your 
Latin alphabet to make it through this. Uh, but kindergarten is a prerequisite for calculus, so you should be on top of that. And this is the partial fraction decomposition form. Okay, so in this case, we have an integral, and there's no obvious u substitution or trig substitution, but it's a rational integrand, which means that we could probably use partial fraction decomposition. So let's do that. So our first step should be to factor the denominator. Okay, and now we will set it equal to its partial fraction decomposition form. So I encourage you to pause the video and try to come up with the form, and then unpause. So here the x squared will give us an a over x plus b over x squared and the x minus one will give us c over x minus one. Now, if you did this on your own, you may have a different arrangement of a, b, and c, but this is the one I'm gonna use. So our next step is to multiply both sides by this factored denominator. So we get three x squared minus x plus one is equal to a x x minus one plus b times x minus one plus c x squared. Okay, now we could expand and then combine by power of x in order to set up a system of equations to find a, b, and c. But let's try using the cover-up method because it's gonna work a little bit. You can often use the cover-up method to get one or two variables and then you have to resort to using a system of equations to get the remaining ones. So let's see. If we let x equal 0, we would be able to find b, because letting x equal 0 would eliminate this term and this term. So on the left-hand side of this equation, we'd get 1. And on the right side, we would simply get b times 0 minus 1. So this tells us that b is negative 1. Excellent. If we let x equal one, we're also gonna eliminate a couple of terms here. So letting x equal one, we would have on the left three minus one plus one, which is three. And on the right, this term and this term would disappear and we'd get c times one squared. Oh, well, that tells us that c is equal to three. So now there's nothing obvious to plug in left that would eliminate both B and C giving us A. So to find A, what we are gonna do is just expand everything and combine by power of X. However, we do know what B and C are, so that's gonna make our life much easier. So on the left, we have three X squared minus X plus one, of course. And on the right, we will distribute to get ax squared minus ax plus bx minus one. However, b is negative one, so this is like negative x plus one, and c is three, so this is three x squared. Now we can combine by power of x, so we have a plus three, which is x squared, plus negative a minus one x plus one. Okay, so merely matching any of these coefficients with their coefficient on the other side will tell us what a is. For instance, we can see that three, the coefficient of x squared on the left, must be a plus three, the coefficient of x squared on the right. And this tells us that a is equal to zero. Uh, you could have also matched the negative one coefficient of x on the left with the negative a minus one coefficient of x on the right, and you would have still concluded that a is equal to zero. So now we have all three, a, b, and c. We can return to the integral and write it in its partial fraction decomposition. So we can conclude that our original integral, which was this thing, 
is equal to a over x. So, well, that's just going to die. Plus b over x squared. So that was negative 1 over x squared. Plus c, which is 3, over x minus 1. Okay, and these are all quite straightforward to integrate. The antiderivative of negative 1 over x squared is just 1 over x. The antiderivative of 3 over x minus 1 is 3 ln of absolute value of x minus 1. And we're done. Final answer. All right, let's give this one a shot here. So, of course, we have a rational expression, so that strongly suggests we should approach this with partial fraction decomposition. There's no obvious u substitution, so yeah, let's do partial fractions. Okay, well, that involves factoring the denominator. So, well, how do we factor something like this? Well, Let's try factor by grouping. That's often a place we need to go when we have four terms like this. So we can factor x squared out of the first two and one out of the second two. Ah, so that means this is like x squared plus one times x plus one. Very good. And the x squared plus one does not factor any further, at least not in the real numbers. So that means that the original problem, x squared minus 2 over x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1 is in fact equal to x squared minus 2 over x squared plus 1 times x plus 1. So writing out the form of its partial fraction decomposition is going to be, ah, well here we have an irreducible quadratic. That means we're going to need ax plus b in its numerator. And then the other term is linear, so we just need one letter for that, so c over x plus 1. So there's the form. Now multiplying everything by the denominator will give us x squared minus 2 is equal to ax plus b times x plus 1 plus c times x squared plus 1. Okay, I think we'll be able to use the cover-up method to get one of the variables, but probably not the other two. So here, what we'll do is we'll let x equal negative 1, because that's going to eliminate a and b from the equation. So on the left, we get negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 2. And on the right, we're going to get c times negative 1 squared plus 1. So here we have negative 1 is equal to 2c, and this tells us that c is equal to negative 1 half. So at this point, we're probably going to have to just FOIL everything out and combine by power of x in order to find our a and b. And remember that c is equal to negative 1 half, so we can put that in directly at this point. Now we'll combine by power of x, so we have the coefficient of x squared being a minus 1 half, the coefficient of x being a plus b, and the constant term being b minus 1 half. Okay, so matching coefficients, we can see that the coefficient of x squared on the left is 1, and the coefficient of x squared on the right is a minus 1 half. So if a minus 1 half is equal to 1, then that tells us that a is equal to 3 halves. And let's go all the way over here to the constant. We have the constant term on the left being negative 2, and the constant term on the right being b minus 1 half. So if b minus 1 half is negative 2, then b is equal to negative 3 halves. So that means the original integral was equal to ax plus b over x squared plus 1 plus c 
over x minus 1. Okay, so now the question is, are these integrals any better than what we started with? Now the answer is virtually 100% of the time going to be yes. So certainly this integral here on the right is immediately going to turn into a natural log. But this one right here is a little interesting. And this is going to happen sometimes, especially when you have the irreducible quadratic factor. You will need to split that even further into two separate integrals. So this is going to be the integral of 3 halves x over x squared plus 1 minus the integral of 3 halves over x squared plus 1. And let's factor that minus out there. We got 1 half over x minus 1 dx. Okay, and in fact, we can even pull out all these coefficients if you don't like them crammed into those numerators. So let's say this is 3 halves x over x squared plus 1 dx minus 3 halves 1 over x squared plus 1 dx minus 1 half integral 1 over x minus 1 dx. Now let's just integrate these. Uh, this one here is going to require a quick little substitution. So our du is 2x dx, which means that a factor of 1 half will emerge, so we get 3 fourths times the integral of du over u, minus these other two integrals we can integrate immediately. This middle one, of course, becomes negative 3 halves times inverse tangent of x, and this last one becomes minus 1 half times ln of absolute value of x minus 1. And for this particular line, the constant we can say is still wrapped up in that last integral, but let's work it out. We get 3 fourths ln of absolute value of u minus 3 halves inverse tangent of x minus 1 half ln of absolute value of x minus 1. And that was our last integral, so we'll put the constant in. And we're just about done, except we need to replace u with x squared plus 1. So this is 3 fourths ln of x squared plus 1, which is naturally a positive expression, so we don't even need the absolute value there. And we're done the problem. Uh, quick correction, I apologize for this. These x minus 1s, these should be x plus 1s all the way down right here, 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 and here. Those are x plus 1s. All right, so here we have another rational integrand and no obvious u substitution or trig substitution or anything like that. So that suggests we use partial fraction decomposition However, the problem is, is that this denominator is already completely factored, and there's no way that you'd be able to convince me that x cubed plus x over x minus 1 could simply be one single number over x minus 1. It's just not going to be true. Um, so one thing that I have not mentioned is that partial fraction decomposition as a method only applies if the numerator has strictly less degree than the denominator, as has been the case in all of our previous examples. So notice here, this is degree 3, and this is degree 1. So it is not true that the numerator has strictly less degree than the denominator. Okay, so what do we do if that's not the case, like this one, where we have a greater degree in the numerator? Or what would we do even if they were equal, like if we had x cubed plus stuff divided by x cubed plus stuff? Um, partial fractions wouldn't even apply in that case. So what do we do in that situation? Well, 
uh, what we have to do is long division. All right, so let's go x cubed plus 0x squared plus x plus 0. And, and let's carry out this long division. So x minus 1. All right, so x goes into x cubed, x squared times, giving us x cubed minus x squared. And we'll just subtract this polynomial from the one above it. So that would give us x squared here, bring down the other terms, and continue. So x goes into x squared, x times, x times x is x squared, x times negative 1 is negative x. So again, we now have 2x here, and x goes into 2x twice, so 2 times x is 2x, and negative 2 here, do the subtraction, so we get a remainder of 2. So our conclusion algebraically is that x cubed plus x over x minus 1 is equal to the quotient plus the remainder over the previous denominator. Okay, well that means that the original integral is simply equal to the integral of x squared plus x plus 2 plus 2 over x minus 1. Oh, that's not too bad because this is basically a polynomial and then that last part will integrate to a natural log. So this is 1 third x cubed plus 1 half x squared plus 2x plus 2 ln of absolute x minus 1, plus our constant. And we're finished. OK, what's this one doing here? That's not a rational expression. What's that doing in this section? So yeah, sometimes you get an integral, and it actually turns into a rational expression after doing a u substitution. So it's not really clear how we might handle this one, but let's just dive in and let u equal radical x plus 3, because that seems kind of inner. So our derivative will be 1 over 2 rad x plus 3 dx. And this means that dx is 2 rad x plus 3 du. OK, but that's 2u du. So let's look at our integral here. We have dx over 2 rad x plus 3 plus x. So our dx is 2u du. And our denominator here will be 2 u plus, well, now what is x? OK, well, we can isolate x by squaring u and subtracting 3. So we'll get something like that for x. And now we can go place it in here. Ah, now we have a rational function. Let's write the terms in descending order. And we can factor the denominator and write out the form of the partial fraction composition. So the denominator factored is going to be u plus 3 times u minus 1. So this is going to give us a over u plus 3 plus b over u minus 1. And multiplying everything by the factor to denominator will give us 2u equals a times u minus 1 plus b times u plus 3. Ah, excellent. In this case, the cover-up method will apply to give us both variables. So let's just let x equal, well, I guess u equal 1. So on the left, we'll get 2. And on the right, we'll get 4b which tells us that b is equal to 1 half. And let's let u be negative 3. So 
On the left, we get two times negative three, which is negative six. And on the right, we will get a times negative three minus one, which is negative four. So this tells us that a is equal to three halves. Okay, so the integral of two u over u plus three u minus one du is equal to the integral of a, which is three halves, over u plus three, plus the integral of b, which is one half, over u minus one. All right, so this of course comes out to three halves, ln of absolute value of u plus three, plus one half, ln of absolute value of u minus one, plus our constant, and if you recall, u was the square root of x plus 3. So our final answer would be 3 halves ln of red x plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 half ln of absolute value of red x plus 3 minus 1 plus our constant. Uh, we were able to get rid of the absolute values on one of these natural log terms because a square root always generates a positive result. And of course, we're adding three, which makes that even more positive. And we're done.